Hi there, this is Lauren Kimball for ANI150. And today, this isn't going to be like a conventional tutorial where it's step by step you follow along. It's more about an approach to this final project being that of a vehicle. There's a lot of ways to approach the vehicle, but the one thing that I want to impress on everyone is that as fancy as this one looks, for example, so this is a vehicle that I've been working on for a really long time, as fancy as this looks, it's all just an expansion of the basics. So every piece of this is just a, a different polygon section. So like a, this all started out as either a polygon plane or a polygon cube, and then it's just extruded and refined until you get the final result. And one of the first techniques that I want to impress when approaching a vehicle is to not be tempted to model it as one piece. I've taught it that way before, but it's such a struggle uh, when you're doing a rough out to break up the pieces later. So I recommend first approaching this as many pieces. That way it's easier for you to model, it's easier for you to manage the, your edge loops, and it's easy for you to lay out the UVs later. So if I look at this piece, it's not one car. In fact, let's, let's look at this as a low poly, so I have a smooth preview on. It's, uh, it's lots of pieces. It's lots and lots of little pieces. In fact, if we go over here to the outliner, phew, lots and lots of pieces. I'm not saying your vehicle has to look like this, for those of you who are in my class. I mean, this will be your first vehicle. But um, if you want it to look nicer, just know that in the end, it's all about going back to the simple tools we've already learned and refining it. And of course, stay organized. Stay so, so organized. It is easy to get lost if you're not naming your pieces. All right, so let's take a step away from this um, finalized type model, and let's look instead at what we're going to be kind of talking about. So you see over here, this is where I started modeling the shock absorber. We're on step 94. If we look at the block out, This is where it all starts. It starts with super simple shapes and just expanding on it. And you know, I got this rough out probably knocked out in like 30 minutes. I'm not expecting everyone to, like if you are in my class, you get to choose your vehicle. You don't have to choose one as complex as this. Although this vehicle is very boxy, it's got a lot of extra parts to it, including tires kind of hanging out up here. And on the other side, I don't know if you caught that in the high poly version, or not the high poly, but the more refined version. It hasn't been high poly till I smooth it. Uh, it's got all these extra bits, like a hatchet and a, and a shovel and a jerry can. You don't need to do all that. And in fact, I don't require any student to model the parts you don't see. So I'm kind of going a little crazy with it and having all these parts that most people aren't gonna see. If, if you don't see it, I'm not requiring it for this assignment. All right, so let's go back and talk about technique. So I'm gonna go over here and click on image planes. And we already did this in a separate video. And I'm gonna start by just putting my uh, image planes in a separate layer so I don't have to worry about them being clicked on by mistake. So I'm just gonna click on these image planes. I'm gonna go over here and click the create button for a layer. This this one on the far right will create a layer and put whatever you have selected into that layer. I'm just going to call this image planes. I'm then going to push this third box twice so it has the R showing and now I can't accidentally select anything. Oh I am selecting these. These are my cameras. I don't actually need to see cameras so I can just go show and turn off cameras and that, that takes care of that without having to add them to a display layer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I think I'm going to begin in looking at my different viewports. I'm just going to begin with the side of the vehicle right here. Now again, mine's a little bit more complicated. It's got this extra wheel well. I'm just going to ignore that for the time being and just focus on this side panel. So let's begin. I could begin with the cube, but I'm going to begin with the polygon plane because I'm not worried about the shape of the vehicle as a whole. That is a way to approach it. In fact, I've recorded a tutorial like that. But I think it's easier if we just mirror geometry and only focus on having to model one side of our vehicle at a time. 
So I'm going to take this lonely little image plane, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees toward my side view camera. Oops, negative 90 evidently. There we go. And there it is. If I go over here to my shading view, I can go to x-ray and that way I see right through it. Now I'm looking for any breaks in the geometry, or not in the geometry, but in my vehicle. So I can place my polygon plane, you know, where, where I want this piece to be. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and grab this edge and just stretch this out. Cool, cool. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to stretch it down. I'm going to ask it to stop right here, right where this lip is. Now this is where it gets important that you have multiple view planes for this assignment. I'm going to press my space bar and I'm going to grab this in object mode. And I'm going to look at it from above. And you can see that I don't quite have this lined up with my reference. Boom, there we go, that's better. So now that I have this aligned with my other references, I can tell how far this little side panel here should be extruded by. I can't tell that from the side plane, I could guess, but if I look at it from above, I can see that this kind of comes out maybe maybe this far, I think. That's technically the wheel wells, but I'm gonna go ahead and just say that this comes out about as far as the wheel wells since the reference doesn't do the best job of it. So I extruded this plane out, extrude this down, and I'm going to extrude it back in. Now I want it to match the other one here so I'm going to hold down V and just snap. Now for those of you who aren't familiar with how I'm extruding I'm just holding down shift and if I hold down shift, I can actually extrude an edge. The other way, of course, is to click on shift right click and use the actual extrude edge tool. All right. Now I'm going to click on this, the bottom portion, and I'm going to shift extrude all the way down, kind of ignoring the wheel well for the time being and just focusing on this general shape. All right. So now that I got that, I'm going to go ahead and go back and think about that wheel well. Remember, I'm kind of ignoring this one for the time being. Most of your vehicles, uh, you know, my students, I'm speaking to my students, of course, this will be published on YouTube, so who knows who will be watching. But for my students, most of you aren't going to be choosing a more complicated vehicle like this. So you don't have to worry about double wheel wells. But for mine, I'm just going to focus on this one for the sake of example. Let's go ahead and use the insert edge loop tool. So I'm going to press F8, that puts us back in object mode, shift right click, insert edge loop, and what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to block out where this wheel well is going to sit. Okay, so I'm, I'm grabbing this edge and this edge, and let's go ahead and add an edge loop here so that we've got uh, just basically a box shape that represents where this wheel is going to be. I'm then going to go ahead and grab this face and I'm going to delete it. So that is where the wheel is going to live. Now in previous ways that I've approached this assignment, I've had a start at the wheel well and extrude outward, but the problem with that technique is that it doesn't lead to very clean geometry and you want to try to have clean edge flow so that it's really easy to insert edge loops and to, you know, add, uh, you know, later when you're reinforcing your edges, it's going to be much easier than if you're dealing with triangles, for instance, or dealing, with, yeah, well, let's keep going. So like in the previous way that I've addressed it, um, there were triangles and it was a little bit more difficult. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a cylinder and I'm going to choose a little bit less, um, less number of faces here. So right now it's set to uh, subdivisions of 20. Let's go with 12. I'm choosing 12 because you'll notice that 12 still maintains that nice roundness of shape even though it's a little polygonal and it allows us to have an edge that goes straight down the middle and straight side to side which is something that I want. I'm then going to rotate this about 90 degrees and I'm going to basically position this where my wheel will, will ultimately be. All right. Now, before I move forward, I'm going to go into isolation mode, which is Control-1 or Command-1 if you're on a Mac. I'm going to grab these bottom faces and delete them, and these internal faces here, making sure I didn't grab any of the outside portions of the cylinder and delete. 
right? So now I just got this half of a cylinder. And I'm going to take this half of a cylinder, let's go ahead and make sure I've selected it in object mode, which is F8. And I'm going to expand it out and I'm going to grow it up a little bit. So it's essentially matching my reference image. If I press Control-1, turn this off, you can kind of see how this shape now matches a little bit more with my reference. Okay, all right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my shading and I'm gonna turn wireframe on shading. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my side view. This is going to make what I'm doing next a little bit more obvious. I can also turn off my images from time to time. So what I'm gonna do is essentially add edge loops around my mesh, around this opening, that will allow me to um, shape this square cutout around this wheel well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create, oops, sorry, wrong hotkey. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the side of my vehicle and I'm going to grab my insert edge loop tool and I'm gonna just insert an edge loop and I'm gonna try to get that edge loop to match with my wheel well as much as possible. So if we turn off the image plane and I press W, I still have this edge selected. I'm gonna hold down V, which selects vertices. You can see up here, it, it turns on and off the snap to vertice. And I'm gonna grab just the Z arrow, and that way I can just snap it side to side. And I've asked it to line up with the top of the cylinder. So now you can see they intersect each other perfectly. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it by vertex mode and hold down V and just move it on the Y. And now it's sitting right there on top of this wheel well. Let's go ahead and do that again with another edge loop right here and right here. I'm just kind of setting them randomly at the moment, just one on each side. Let's grab the first one by double clicking and that grabs the whole edge flow. And I'm going to press w, or w for my move tool, hold down V and I'm gonna snap it. Now I'm snapping it just by grabbing the Z arrow, which is now yellow, but it's on the Z axis. I'm gonna hold down V and I'm just gonna, if I, if I go to the left, it's gonna snap to the vertice closest to the left. If I go to the right, it'll snap there. But if I hover my mouse down here, it's going to snap right there above where the line is, where the edge is on that cylinder. Cool. All right, I'm gonna go back to vertex mode, grab this vertex here, hold down V to snap vertice grab my y-axis and snap this down so that it lines up. I think you can see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna do the same thing with this lone vertex here. I'm gonna press V, snap it to the side, and snap it down so it sits right on that cylinder. Now, I think this looks a little ugly the way the geometry is behaving, so I'm going to grab this other vertex. I'm gonna snap it down so that it aligns. I can grab these three, hold down V, snap it and ask it to line up and it just looks so much cleaner. All right, so let's do that again. I'm gonna grab all these edges, all these vertex, all vertices, hold down B and just snap this over so that all these vertices align with this cylinder's edge. Grab the bottom vertice, hold down V and snap this down. All right, let's do that again over here. Also, I could just use the same technique and grab all of these at the same time hold down V and ask it to line up right here. Grab the bottom vertex, boom, snap it down. And then of course this, can go ahead and snap that down. And maybe get this to snap a little closer. And this one maybe, oops, evidently clicked play, turned it on. There we go. All right, so now it matches the shape of the cylinder and we don't need that cylinder anymore. So I'm just gonna go back to object mode. Ooh, sorry. And delete the cylinder. No need for it. Instead, I'm gonna go ahead and grab edges and I'm going to click this edge and double click all the way to this edge. I'm gonna go back to my top view, turn on my image planes again, and I can see where that wheel well extends. Hold down shift, Extend this out. Doesn't quite match. It's okay if the references are a little off. Some of it's gonna have to be eyeballed. 
but you know you just want to get in general proximity all right now I'm going to with those edges still selected with that um, bit of mud flap there still selected in fact I could use my back view if you don't know how to see the back view you just go to panels orthographic and you should have a back view you see the back view feels like this is even longer still so I could just go even further if I feel like it it's just got to do the best you can these images they line up pretty close but they're not perfect so some of it's going to be artistic license all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this view with that edge still selected, shift right click, extrude tool. I'm gonna to use the extrude tool this time instead of that, you know, quick extrude. All right, looks good. Um, let's make sure down here that these little vertices are lining up okay. Because they look like they're dipping down a little. Let's move it up and snap it up. There we go, see how they're nice and and uh, laying flat horizontally. All right, grab these inner edge, and I'm gonna go ahead and just extrude this back. Now, the first time I extrude back, I'm going to hold down V, and I'm going to snap it so that it ends right here, and then hold down Shift and extrude again. That way, if I decide to make this wheel well deeper later, I can just grab this backward area and do so without any issue, or back most, issue, back most area, not backward. And I can also go ahead and, oops, grab these two edges here. Looks like I accidentally grabbed more than two. One, two, shift right click, and uh, bridge. So there, kind of close off the mud flaps around my wheel well. Okay, all right, now let's deal with the back. There's a couple ways we could deal with this. One way that's tempting is to double click this edge and basically extrude and uh, merge uh, edges to center, snap this down, and that's one way to deal with it. This is one of the things I wanted to avoid though with the original way that I taught how to kind of approach this in the past. And the, re the issue is that if I start adding edge loops later on, like let's say I want to reinforce some of these edges, if I decide to go in here and insert edge loop, it's going to stop right there. And the more I do this, the more it's gonna start creating wonky geometry, ingons, you name it. So I don't want that. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and turn this into a quad. So I'm gonna delete these. And what I'll do is I'm gonna grab uh, this edge here, and this edge here, I'm gonna shift, right click, and I'm gonna bridge. And I'm gonna go ahead and add one division. See that? Perfect. Now I'm gonna grab this edge and this edge, and I can just press G to bridge again, and I'm gonna do it again here, and G is the hotkey to repeat a command. And now it's, it's flowing with quads, which is so much nicer. Now it's gonna be easier for us to go in and insert edge loops later, so if I were to Go to object mode, shift right click, insert edge loops, and I wanted to reinforce the bottom edge. Look how it flows so nicely. Much, much better. So, more about that later though. And here we have our first little side panel. And what's lovely about this is I can click this in object mode, so F8. I'm gonna go ahead and delete history because it gains a lot of history. I'm also gonna name this um, if I were sitting in the driver's seat, this would be my left side, so I'm just going to call this left side for now. I'll probably come up with a more appropriate term for it later. But eventually, when I'm ready to, I can shift right click and mirror. Let's go ahead and reset the tool. I'm going to not cut geometry. I'm going to copy across the world on the x-axis. I'm not going to combine. I'm just going to apply. And you see, that I don't have to do the work twice. I can just do it once. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually just undo that. That's for later. All right, so let's take a look at the side here and I see that there is kind of an indention that I might wanna address. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and shift right click, uh, insert edge loop tool. And oh, you notice how 
the edge loop is kind of rotating a little bit. That happens naturally because the insert edge loop tool wants to go with the flow of the faces and since this is indented here it's going to bend. So if you don't want that, if you want a straight cut, what you're going to want to use, so let's go back to object mode and select our mesh. Oops, didn't work. F8. But what you're going to want to use is something called the multi-cut tool, which I mean we've used in class before. But what we're going to do with it is we're going to line it up as best we can, hold down shift and just cut. And if it's not perfect, no big deal. I can always grab this edge and move this over slightly. Cool. And let's do that again over here. Cut directly. That one's very close. And that way, we don't have to worry about it flowing with the edge loops instead, or the, you know, the edge flow. Now we can get just a direct cut where we want it. We don't have to worry about that on the horizontal side because everything is um, flowing symmetrically. So we can just go back and use the insert edge loop tool for the top and the bottom of this without any issue. Okay, so now we've got this little area marked off. Go ahead and extrude. Maybe shrink it in a little bit. And there we go. And of course, when I'm ready to start refining this, I can go back in and get the shape that I want. But honestly, it's very close to the shape over here. Just maybe a little bit of edge reinforcements there. All right. I have noticed that it looks like this edge right here is kind of, I don't know if I like that. This is kind of moved with the wheel well. I can always get that to snap back if I want it. If I want something a little bit sharper there, hold down V, snap, V, snap, V, snap, and there. Everything is lining with it. Okay, I get why that happened. It happened because I added an edge loop that direction. No big. So I probably should use the multi-cut there as well, but not a problem. All right, so that is basically the side of my vehicle. Let's go ahead and move forward with the next portion. So remember I said that breaking this into pieces is the best way to go. And so I would say this should all be one piece. On my vehicle, I treated, let's see, let me grab my grease pencil. So this lets me just draw in my scene. All right, so I basically made all of this I know it's kind of, I'm drawing with my mouse. I made all of this one piece. So the door, the front window area, this was all one chunk. If you decide to do it that way, that is entirely up to you. Um, me, I, it really just depends. You should probably make the door separate piece, especially if you're doing a more traditional car. But again, it's up to you. You don't actually have to go with how the vehicle is broken up, but how the vehicle is broken up can be really handy. So let's go ahead and see how I would get this next portion done. First thing I would do is I would begin by grabbing this edge here and this edge here. Oh, real quick, let's... I think this bit right here, um, it discontinues next to the wheel well, so it doesn't roll onto the door. So I'm going to go ahead and bridge this. There we go. I'm going to grab this, hold down Q, if you tap Q rather, so that you're using the select tool and not the move tool. And there we go. So I'm grabbing this edge along the side. And I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out. Oops, did I let go of something? I must have. Yep, I sure did. Let's try again. There we go. So I'm extruding out. I'm lining it up with my door. And this is where it gets important to go back to the side view, front view, wherever view you might be. And you can see that this needs to come in quite a bit to line with the door. Okay. So this goes in a bit deeper than the side panel does. There we go. I'm going to go shading, x-ray. Yeah, and it's a little bit off. Uh, I could adjust this so it matches this view a little bit more, but uh, do I care? I don't think I care. 
like I said, there's some artistic license involved. And if I want, I definitely want this to be separate from my side, so I'm just going to press the edge. Make sure I got all of that. Did I Let's press Q so I can see? Nope, doesn't grab this. There we go. Press 4 so I can make sure I got all of the edge. Oops. All right. I'm going to go shift right click and I'm going to click on this is two point there's two parts to this you can't just separate this because the vertices are all merged here this is all one mesh so if I were to separate it nothing would happen first you have to select the edges that you want to break off if you're going to make a new piece and you're going to shift right click and you're going to go to detach all right and that by itself does not make this a separate mesh but if I go over here and click on a vertex you'll see that it's it's technically separated it's cut so now I'm going to grab my mesh, I'm going to shift right click, and I'm going to separate. And so now I've got two pieces. And they're both grouped into the left side group because the left side doesn't technically exist. Now it's these two new polygons. I can make this group disappear by deleting history. Well, sometimes that works. I definitely got rid of the transformation information. But um, yeah, if I want to get rid of the group, I can just drag these out and delete the group, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. What I'm going to worry about is getting this shape the way I want it. So now that I've got this new door, there's a lot of edge loops I don't need anymore. So I'm going to shift right click, delete edge, delete edge. I think I'm going to keep this bottom one here. And let's go ahead and shape this up with the door a little bit more. Cool. And let's go ahead and extrude this downward. This whole piece stops here at the door, hold down shift, and stop at the wheel well. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and bring this up. Maybe I want to stop this here. Yeah, I want to stop this here. I'm going to go ahead and insert a new edge loop. Right where it looks like this is going to stop. Another edge. Pull this out this way. So just blocking it out, keeping it simple shapes. But you'll notice it's not quite aligning anymore on my side because this bit right here is um, hitting right here on my front view. So what I need to do is grab this, this, and this, these three edges here, and I'm just going to push them in so that they're matching a little bit more with my my image. And I may do the same with my door because I don't think this door is completely flat. It looks like it angles inward. You can't really tell from the top view unfortunately so if I bring back my top view it's kind of hidden but yeah no you can kind of tell that the door angles in. So let's go in here and grab this that represents where the end of the door frame is going to be or the front of the door frame. One if I click tab, I can select multiples. And let's bring this in. There we go, lining it up. And you see that that lines up quite nicely. Now this part up here doesn't line up very nicely, but that's because it's going to be kind of hidden up underneath this, so I'm not super worried about that right now. But the rest of this, yeah, I think I'm feeling it. Okay. So... Looks like there's going to be a little bit of a rim here. Let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to kind of guess because there's not a really good example of how far this should go out. But I can see how far it should go up. Just a little bit up. I'm eyeballing it. All right, I'm going to start to bring this up, and this is where I would start extruding up and over and kind of making this line up a little bit more with the, with the hood. Now again, this isn't going to be perfect, but we're going to just sort of make some artistic choices. So I'm going to extrude this edge up to where I see the top of the hood is. Maybe bring this down a little bit. Okay. 
grab this and maybe start bringing this over a bit. So we're starting to get that rounded shape. Maybe go over here and grab this, bring this over. And bring this to the middle. I'm gonna want to go ahead and snap these. I'm gonna want to bring this edge down. So you just kind of see that I'm jumping viewports and sort of getting the general shape in. Let's go look at the side view. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging it. Let's bring this up and over like this. Kind of just matching it. Now we can see that we're not yet matching here. So let's bring this up on the y-axis and maybe think about adding some edge loops in here. So maybe an edge loop here. Maybe line this up, line this up. Hey, hey, mercy, us. Oh, sorry, my dog. It's not quite lining up in both views, but I am liking the general shape. Hmm. So I'm going to have to make a choice ultimately. I think I'm going to side perhaps with my side view. Oh no. Hmm. Okay, there's that one. You can definitely see the change in the difference between these two images. Hmm, so I'm gonna have to kind of make some decisions. I think I think I'm gonna be okay with that. Just got to keep that in mind that there's going to be a little bit of an issue there. Oh, but I've been relying more on the side view. So I think ultimately I'm going to err on the side of the side view. Uh, I don't want to lose all of this that I've created. So I'm going to press D and move this down. And then maybe use scale. And that'll keep the kind of proportions going for the hood. Yeah, that's really unfortunate that my images don't line up a little bit better. But I still think we can make this work. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we got as far as the hood goes. I'm gonna go ahead and grab here to here for now. I can always extrude the rest later. Do I wanna extrude the rest later? No, let's go ahead and do all of this. Let's go ahead and grab here all the way to up here and move all of this down. Cool. All right, I'm going to take this and I want to keep all of this lined up. So I'm going to press D. Actually, let's make sure this edge is selected first. So I'm going to grab this edge. There we go. Press D. And I'm going to ask this to line up the bottom lip of this ind indention. And I'm going to use scale, so that way, well, maybe not this part. I'm going to scale, control to, oops, control to let go of this part down here, and just scale this top down so I get that nice slant. And let's go in up here and maybe press D. Remember, D allows me to move my pivot and move this in. So now we can start to see the shape taking place. And I think I'm going to want to move this in as well. Maybe I should have grabbed that after all. Oh, that's strange. Oh, no, it's not strange. So sometimes when you change the pivot, it alters the move tool. I have to just double click the move tool, reset settings. And now it'll go back to selecting that vert. There we go. Line all that stuff up. All right, so let's move this up. I'm just kind of showing you my workflow. I'm not trying to give a step-by-step -step tutorial this time. I'm just showing, you know, this is how I go about modeling something like this. It's not as ideal as getting all these image planes perfectly. That would be so much better, but we're not always granted that. So all you really need to do is work on 
trying to get the general shape and making artistic choices where they come. Okay, so I'm going to just save a version of this as like my third block out. And let's go back to the one that I modeled earlier. So with this particular block out, you can see I went about it the same way. Doesn't quite line up perfectly on the front view. Actually, it's looking a lot better. But uh, basically, the difference between these two is this part right here. I just went ahead and accepted that it's not going to line up with the hood the same way. So you gotta just make some choices. That's part of why I asked you all to find those reference images of your vehicle so that it'll help you make those decisions. So I could go back and look at the references that I found of this specific model and see how it lays out on that vehicle and I can figure out which reference I wanna go with. But I ultimately chose and deferred to my side view. So when I, I got this part here, I made the door separate in this version but I think the last thing that I'd want to touch on, so essentially just model this out, model what you see. Um, every piece that is separate on here, you can kind of make a judgment call. Uh, you could choose to have the door be part of this front piece. I decided this iteration to make the door separate. If there are handles, make those handles a separate piece. If there are mirrors, make the mirror a separate piece. Don't feel like everything has to be extruded from one mesh. It's going to make everything a lot easier down the road. Also, do not worry about modeling the bits that you don't see. I'm just going to reiterate that. You don't have to do it. So um, one last thing I want to touch on is, generally speaking, when you reinforce these edges, so you can see on this particular version that I reinforced the edge here and I reinforced the edge here. So when I smooth them, there's not really a gap between the pieces. But what do you do if there is a gap between the pieces? Like, let's just pretend that this was like my final smooth, clearly it's not, and there's a gap there. Well, think to yourself, what would you do on a, what, what, what does a real car look like? Why, why can't you see through the cracks of a real car? And that's because underneath the car is a car frame that the car is pieced together in. So if I were to pull up my browser real quick, and I were to type in like car frame. There you go. You can see that there's a general frame that your car is built on. And this is where the door closes and you're actually peering through the cracks and seeing this frame. You don't have to model all that, but if your final mesh has a gap, you could just create a polygon plane and you know, kind of extrude over here and have it line up there. So this mesh, is not ready for that step. So I'm just going to show a little mini example by putting this in a display layer. Let's pretend this is part of my car and this is part of my car. And I've got a gap in between. So how I would handle that is I would take part of the edge and extrude inward slightly. And same over here, extrude in slightly and then just create another polygon plane. Much more narrow. And you can see, you can't see through there. And you can have this polygon plane, it doesn't have to look like a real car frame, but it can match whatever it is that you need it to match. Like if you need it to go a certain way to align with your car door, you can do it. And then that's what it will look like. And then whatever shader you use, like your base shader for the car paint, stick it on there. And it's gonna be, since it's a single plane, it's gonna be super easy to UV map. And it's something that I would wait towards the end to even fuss with, because you may not need it. Especially if you're detaching and separating the meshes as you go, you're gonna end up with a really closely aligned mesh. That's what I did for my final car. So in this vehicle, which I'm not quite done with yet, you're gonna find that there aren't a lot of gaps. So give it a second to open. You're gonna find that there's not a lot of gaps 
And part of that is because I aligned these so closely in the low poly mode. Now the car, you're not going to see like on the car door because I made the car door one piece with it. But you'll see that this part is separate from the hood. And it's just so closely aligned. That's why. But yeah, that's one option. Uh, another option would be just to have those edges kind of intersect a little bit. I don't really mind what you do for your assignment. Just try to make sure that you don't have make sure that you don't have any gaps open because if you bring that into Substance Painter or you bring that into Marmoset, it's gonna, it's going to show you transparency. Whereas in Maya, you're going to see back face culling. You're going to see like the the actual like black side. I did not mean to open that one. I meant to open up this one. Anyway, I hope this proved helpful. It's not an exhaustive tutorial, clearly. I just wanted to show you the basics. This is simply, no matter how complex your mesh is, and this goes for everything in art, no matter how fantastic a painting is or a sculpture is, everything is about the fundamentals. Everything starts with simple shapes, and then you just build it upward. Make sure you save in increments so that if you ever come to a point where you feel like, oh my gosh, this is getting a little bit out of hand, I need to go back a step, that you have that. So anytime you make a big change, so if I were working on this, after I'm done with this part, I'd probably save it. After I'm done with this part, save it, you know, like after I've blocked everything in. Don't be afraid to save lots of iterations and make sure that you are saving with little suffixes here after the number saying what the heck you did on that step. Otherwise, you'll be going back in time ad nauseum, not knowing where to go. All right, I hope this tutorial has been helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And yeah, good luck.